Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is uh, Mike Gallagher. I'm the councilman for uh, District 10. We also, believe it or not, have another councilman here today. Have any of you heard of Joe Cryer? Joe, stand up. Let everybody see you there. Uh, if Joe looks a little worn, he's been through a campaign like nobody's business. Congratulations, Joe. Great victory for you. That really was. Uh, we also have with us our city manager, Cheryl Scully. Cheryl, where are you? Wave your hand. There you go. Want to make sure everybody sees her. Uh, something that makes me so proud, and I've said this before. If you want to hold a meeting that's got neighborhood leaders in it, come out to District 10. You're going to get the biggest turnout you're going to anywhere in the city. So I just want to thank everybody for being here tonight. Uh, this is a very important time for us. What Cheryl's got to put up with is not easy. You think about how we're growing as a city. You think about all of the expenses that we're going to have to endure. And the reason we're here is to figure out not only what we should be spending that money on, but also, if necessary, what we've got to cut. This is not an easy process. So we really do appreciate the fact I wanted you to have a voice in this process, and it looks like this is set up so we can do that. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. And now I'm going to turn it over to Cheryl. Cheryl? Thank you, Mike. And uh, we're happy to be here tonight back in District 10. And I know we have some returning veterans who have been here every year that we've been doing this for the past eight or nine years. So thank you for your loyalty and for coming back to meet with us and to give us your input on what you think should be included and how we should help the city council prioritize city services. So thank you for being here tonight. Um, so here's what we're going to do on our program this evening. We have a number of city staff here and I'm going to, for those who are standing in the back, I see our police chief and we've got a number of parks, uh, our parks directors here, Xavier, a number of city executives, wave your hand, uh, city staff or stand if you're at a table. I know we have city staff at each of the table to help you and take notes and facilitate the conversation. So staff, thank you. Um, thanks for being here and all those that are standing in the back and we'll move around and answer questions that you might have as you're deliberating and giving us input. First, we're gonna show you a very brief video that summarizes our budget, our $2.3 billion budget what the components of that budget are, and what we're asking you to do tonight is also to prioritize city services and help us. Um, and we take this input, share it with all the council members, and they will use it in their goal setting session on Tuesday, May 27th, where they'll talk about city priorities and give us direction so that we can prepare a budget and propose that in early August reflecting their priorities with input from you. So we're going to begin with the video, talk about the budget, its components, and then we'll come back and, and give a few instructions and give you a timeline on our evening uh, of conversation. So let's roll the video and then we'll have a few more words. The many services provided by the City of San Antonio are prioritized and funded through the adopted annual budget. This video will provide you with an overview of the many services provided by the City and explain how the City pays for these services. With an annual budget of $2.3 billion and 11,300 employees, the City of San Antonio strives to provide you with high quality services every day. So how does the city's budget work? The city's total budget is divided into separate funds, including the general fund, restricted funds, and the capital budget. The largest of these funds is the city's general fund, which receives funding from four major sources of revenue. Property taxes, sales taxes, CPS energy revenues, and other revenues. Property taxes represent the city's portion of the taxes you pay on your home and business. However, the city's portion of your total property tax bill is only about 25%. Sales taxes are collected on purchases made throughout the city and are dependent on the local economy. 
CPS Energy provides a portion of its gross profits to the city as a return on investment, and these revenues vary based on the South Texas weather. Finally, other revenues represent funding collected from user fees, licenses, and permits. Together, these revenues support the majority of city services. Two-thirds of the total general fund budget is allocated to the police and fire departments. With more than 4,000 uniformed personnel, the police and fire departments enforce the law, protect San Antonio residents, their families, and their homes. The remaining one-third of the general fund resources support critical city services, such as streets, parks, libraries, code enforcement, health and human services, and animal care. The City of San Antonio is facing a financial challenge of $27 to $34 million in fiscal year 2015 in the general fund. Expenditures in the general fund are growing at a faster pace than general fund revenues. The financial challenges that the city faces in 2015 include the increased cost of providing health care benefits to uniform police and fire employees, maintaining a AAA bond rating, maintaining a balance between public safety and other services paid by the general fund, and the many needs across the city, including street maintenance, new sidewalks, library services, human services, and the maintenance of city facilities. In order to maintain a balanced budget in fiscal year 2015, as required by law, the city will have to prioritize services and redirect resources in the general fund. More than 66% of the general fund is allocated to the police and fire budgets. If the community desires to maintain or increase the funds allocated to police and fire, other city services such as streets, parks, libraries, animal care, code enforcement, and health and human services would have to be reduced. The city maintains more than 4,000 miles of streets, more than 400 miles of drainage infrastructure, and more than 1,300 traffic signals. The maintenance and preservation of the city's streets and sidewalks is the responsibility of the city's Transportation and Capital Improvements Department. Each day, city employees work to preserve and maintain streets across San Antonio by filling in potholes, as well as maintaining city drainage channels, adding bike lanes, and building new sidewalks. The Parks and Recreation Department maintains 244 parks, 14,816 acres of parkland, 145 miles of trails, 24 outdoor pools, and 29 community centers throughout the city. San Antonio's 26 libraries provide residents of all ages access to books, computers, and educational programs. Through the libraries, you can receive live homework assistance and download ebooks, audiobooks, music, and videos for free. The Animal Care Services Department is committed to improving outcomes for San Antonio's pet population through increased education, adoptions, and enforcement. For the current fiscal year, resources were added to increase spay neuter surgeries enhance licensing awareness, and reduce the number of loose and stray animals. As a result of these additional resources and many other efforts by the Animal Care Services Department, the city has been able to increase its live pet release rate from 30% in 2011 to 80% today. The city provides code enforcement officers who work throughout San Antonio to maintain the safety and integrity of our neighborhoods. These officers enforce the city's property maintenance code, address concerns caused by unoccupied and dilapidated structures, and help prevent and abate graffiti. Other important city services are funded by restricted funds that are not supported by property tax revenue. 
The rates and fees that support services paid by restricted funds cannot be used to pay for services in the general fund, such as police, fire, streets, or code enforcement. Services paid by restricted funds include garbage collection, review of new commercial and residential development permits, operations of the international airport, and the city's parking operations. Ensuring that the fiscal year 2015 budget is financially balanced and reflects the priorities of the community is a collaborative effort between residents, city leaders, and city staff. The city wants to know which services matter most to you. Let us know your priorities by attending one of five community budget input hearings scheduled from May 19th to May 22nd. You can also provide your input through the city's budget input box located inside libraries, senior centers, and online at www.sanantonio.gov slash budget. With your assistance, the City of San Antonio can continue to deliver high quality services to all residents in our great community. give you an overview we are required by law to maintain a balanced budget so when you hear that we have a budget challenge of 27 to 34 million that is within the general fund to do everything we're doing today based on the revenue we estimate we'll receive next year that's how much we'd have to cut in the budget to balance the budget or identify other revenue sources to make up that difference so when you hear that we talk about that at this time of budget preparation, and then when I present the budget, that goes away. That's because we figure out how to cut the budget so that we live within our means. And the city councils have not increased the property tax rate for the city for 21 years. So living within our means over the past uh, decade, we have, during my tenure as manager, I've recommended and the council's approved adding almost 500 police officers and firefighters, a total of 473 to be exact, and we've cut about 1,200 civilian positions. And so as you think about our city growth, and we're one of the fastest growing cities in the country, we've added fire stations, we've added libraries, we've added hundreds of acres of additional parkland over the past decade, and yet we're doing it with fewer staff. That's because we're constantly looking at ways that we can provide the services in the best way possible to you, the taxpayers, who are paying the bills. So tonight, we want your input on how best to organize our budget. And you may have heard a little bit about our conversation about public safety, police and fire, health care, and benefits, and our, our contracts that we're talking with the employees about. And the reason to have that conversation is that we want our benefits to be fair, but we also want them to be affordable to the taxpayers. And so we're trying to make changes that will allow us to have a fair compensation package, but one that is also affordable to those of you who are paying. And we all know that all of us are paying something for health care. We're participating in the cost, and it continues to grow every year. So we're proposing changes that would keep it fair as well as affordable. So tonight at your tables, we have some instructions on what we'd like for you to do to help us get that input that we're seeking for budget preparation. And I'm going to introduce Maria Villa Gomez. She'll give you those instructions. We'll give you a time, a time to have this conversation. And then at the end, we'll report out. If you'd identify a person at each of your tables uh, to be the spokesperson for your group to talk about that which you've reached some consensus on in terms of your recommendations. Now, how many of you have been to another budget meeting already this week? So we have some returning, returning people. That's good. You may want to go around the table and just introduce yourselves to one another and talk about who, if you're here to re representing an organization, a neighborhood group, or one of our labor associations, identify yourself for the group so that those sitting with you understand and know who you might be representing uh, here this evening. I see Sally Scott, and she's been very active on our 
<laughs> our Animal Care Advisory Board for many years. Thank you for your service. We have a number of volunteers here tonight, so uh, thank you. And Maria, I'll turn it over to you for instructions. Thank you, Cheryl. Well, now that you have learned a little bit about the budget, how the budget process works, and some of the challenges that we're facing next fiscal year, now we want to hear from you. We want to know what are your priorities for the upcoming fiscal year. So we have an exercise uh, for you tonight that we will ask you uh, to participate in, and there are three questions that we're going to ask you. The first question, as you heard in our general fund, which is the largest operating fund of the city, we are facing a financial challenge, 27 to 34 million. So in order to balance the budget, we either have to reduce cost or increase revenue or a combination of the two. So the first question is what areas, uh, departments or programs would you be willing to reduce uh, in the upcoming year? So as we prepare the budget, we can take those considerations into account. The next question is, are you willing to increase revenues? For instance, property taxes. Uh, the property tax rate uh, today uh, has not been increased for the past 20 years. If we were to increase our property taxes by one cent, the city would be able to collect an additional $7.4 million annually. The impact to the average homeowner is about $14 annually. The average homestead is about $134,000. That is just to give you some perspective on property tax. Or other uh, rates or fees uh, included in the general fund like parks fees, alarm fees, uh, EMS transport fees. So those are uh, uh, revenues uh, that perhaps we could increase to help us balance the budget. So that, that is question two. And then the last question is, what areas would you like for us to consider enhancing or perhaps adding new programs? As you heard, we have this financial challenge, so if we want to add something to the budget, we have to prioritize within the existing services. And perhaps there's a program that you may think is no longer a priority to the community, and you would like to recommend to reprioritize those dollars to a higher priority of uh, of uh, the community. So those are the three questions. Um, there is a director or assistant director at our, our, your table to help you with this process. If there are any questions, there's uh, quite a bit of staff here to help you address those questions. And you have 30 minutes for this exercise. I will give you a reminder 10 minutes before the 30 minutes are up. So thank you so much. Um, if somebody wasn't able to attend this, what other methods could they use to input? Oh, there's plenty of them. Uh, one thing you can do is just go online to sanantonio.gov and get the information about the budget. Another one is to go to your local library and you can actually write your ideas and put them in a box there that can be collected and that will go into the process. Is this your first time doing this sort of thing? No, uh, believe it or not, because I've worked with neighborhoods, we've been doing this for a long, long time. We always have shown up to these meetings and to tell what we think our priorities should be for the district and for the entire city. Do you enjoy it? Yes, it's really an interesting process. One of the things, and all of us need to do this, is to sit back for a moment and say, what's really important? What should the money be being spent on? Thank you very much. Thank you. Good questions. Say, hey, we got this idea for the community. So we better get our, you know, not just to say, hey, we want the police to be taken care of. You know, these areas are not that important. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to wrap it up. Everybody ready? All right, everybody, let's wrap it up. What we're going to do now, and this is the, this is the best part of this, is I hope everybody has picked a spokesman. We're gonna hear from each table. We're gonna get your report. Wake up, everybody. Time out, time out, time out. Quiet, please. Everybody, quiet, please. Very good. Got some teachers in here? Yeah, let's make sure. Everybody be quiet. 
Uh, we want to hear from each table now. You've selected a uh, spokesperson. We'll start in the order of the table numbers, so look on your table to find out which table you are. Uh, we're going to give everybody two minutes. Oh, we'll the staff out. is all ready to take numerous notes on the brilliant things we've come up with. So we're going to start first with table one. Are you ready? We'll bring the microphone over to you. Yeah. If you guys want to come over, if you guys want to come over. Yeah, just talk to it. Good evening. I'm not used to speaking um, with a microphone, so this is something new for me. Um, this is my first time to come to a budget session. And um, what we have come up with here at Table 1 in regards to um, increasing revenues is that uh, we want to see about making equitable property taxes for all the businesses. Uh, we're not talking about raising any property taxes. We're just talking about making people pay their fair share, mainly in the commercial sector. And another thing is fees. We want to be able to collect fees. Um, we have things around uh, the city that uh, I think we could make more revenue on with uh, making sure that we get fees for our garage sale permits, making sure that we get fees for uh, fines when like code enforcement goes out and uh, we uh, fine a citizen for violations. We want to make sure that we get fees on that. We want to make sure that uh, we get fees for animal control uh, issues. Uh, so we, we want to make sure that the fair share of fees are being paid by not only the citizens but also the commercial sector. And uh, in our other general budget balancer, uh, we're looking at improvements. Uh, we definitely need some improvements in our library system. And uh, we think maybe $250,000 um, improvement uh, so we can keep the libraries open longer and more days because it just seems like the libraries keep getting closed sooner and sooner and sooner. And uh, we, we, we need uh, these ability to educate these children out here by allowing them the proper time to go and get library services. We definitely need street improvements. I don't know if we can put a dollar man onto that because there is so much street improvements that need to be done, but uh, streets and infrastructure uh, need to occur. Um, I do not like driving on potholes and on bumpy streets and we need uh, sidewalks in areas, especially near schools and parks. And on our next uh, thing is animal care. Animal care is very um, understaffed, under-resourced, and I think we need to put more money into more officers and we need to uh, include more education on our animal problem. And I think we need to put more into our spay and neuter program having basically 10 zip codes that get free spay and neuter is, is not enough. We need it to be for the entire city. Uh, code enforcement. We need more code enforcement officers. It takes a long time to create a case for one individual to get fined $25. Uh, we need more resources out there. We need more officers. We need better equipment. Um, we... Uh, running a shortfall, you know, one officer handles a big area. Uh, so we do need to put some more money into our code enforcement because we do work hand in hand with animal care and animal care works hand in hand with us and we work hand in hand with the rest of the city. We want a better, for, a better city, a safer city. And our next thing is we need quality jobs. Quality jobs cost money. But in order to have good code enforcement, good animal care, good library system, we need to have cost of living increases. We have, to, we have to keep our employees. It's very costly when employees leave and we have to rehire new ones. So it's very important that we do have quality jobs here in San Antonio. And quality jobs means quality pay and quality benefits. 
Okay, we got to wrap it up for one because we got to hear from the other tables. So let's go ahead Thank and go you. to table two. Thank you. My name is Coletta Galloway, and I'm sure a lot of you here know me. Um, one of the things we talked about was that San Antonio is the seventh largest city in the country, and we look to being a world-class city. But we also think that saying that we haven't increased taxes for 20 years and we keep cutting things does not help make you a world-class city. You could only cut so much. So we decided that we would like to see a two cent increase in the property taxes. As they uh, told us, a hundred, approximately $130,000 uh, average home price, that would be $14 for one cent. So we're talking about about $28 a year for the average home. We also thought that the city employees' health benefits could have some improvement and there might be cost savings there and that working with the police and fire department to help restructure their health benefits could also result in savings. Um, we talked about long-term vendor contracts where the contracts would uh, require you to go to Staples and buy something where you might be able to just run down to Costco or someplace else and get it for maybe 25 to 50% cheaper that there could be perhaps credit cards for a lot of things like this where the money is amount is budgeted, but you could go where you could get it cheaper. Oh, studies by universities that we pay for. We have quite a few number of universities, colleges in San Antonio. You always have doctoral students or uh, master students that are looking for projects that need to do research that uh, have to have something to provide for their graduation to get their degree. Rather than paying for a lot of these studies, they can be used to do them. And we would like to see the savings go to streets, sidewalks, and libraries. Our libraries are only open two nights a week for two hours. The people who use the libraries need to be able to get to the library. They may not be able to get to them on weekends, so they need to have more time available to them. We want to attract more industry, more businesses to San Antonio. Yet we have areas, even here on the north side, that do not have sidewalks. We have streets that are in pitiful condition. We have areas in the older parts of the city that have sidewalks that are so broken up, so overgrown, that they can hardly be used by people. Okay, Coletta, a world class city doesn't have that. Thank you very much, Coletta. <laughs> Table three. Well, a lot of what we would say is already uh, is already said, but I will say that uh, we also, after more than twenty years of no increase in uh, property taxes. Uh, we think it's time to bring us into the 21st century and raise them by a nickel. So that would give us a pretty significant increase right there. The other uh, uh, enhancement we would look for, I, I don't want to upset the Tea Party members any more than I have. But, uh, the other... Um, Reductions we would uh, look for, reductions in, let me back up here. We would uh, cut 10% from the parks department. Um, that's mainly in maintenance and that kind of thing. Uh, okay, well, everybody, every table gets their own whack at this. You know that, right? Let them talk, let them talk. Uh, alarm response time, uh, when the police have to come to a house for a, an alarm, a false alarm, we would charge more for the permit and more to the alarm company for their fee. What would we do with the excess $40 million? Uh, besides bring the budget into balance, we would take the rest of it and put it on our streets. 
Uh, you don't have to drive many of our streets to be embarrassed if you have visitors to San Antonio. It's pretty sad. We need to get them better. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dick. Okay, let's hear from Table 4. Hi, my name's Bill, and I'm representing Table 4. Okay, we want to we wanna close the budget gap by cutting $1 million from center, center City Development. We need some development out here. Sidewalks, streets, drainage. Uh, downtown operations, we want to cut it $3 million. The money that they generate for hotel motel taxes stays down, stays downtown. So it's not lowering my tax rate. It's not lowering your tax rate. It stays downtown. Why don't we send that money out here to put in some sidewalks and whatever? Okay, economic development, that is a problem because nobody seems to know how much we really spend on it because CPS gives nice contracts uh, uh, for energy. Uh, saws give nice contracts for water to get those businesses here. Nobody can tell me, and I've asked the question before, so we want to cut economic development $2 million. Historic preservation, I didn't vote for that. $1 million. <laughs> Planning department, I didn't vote for that either. $1 million. Uh, Streetcars, there's nothing in this year's budget, we think, but uh, we don't want to pay for streetcars. One-time budget, one-time one -time projects. That is $7 million for a one-time project. Well, sidewalks are a one-time project, so is, so is drainage, but we don't get $7 million for that up here, so we want to cut them uh, $3 million. That's a total of $13 million, so we still got to cut some more. Uh, executive bonuses, they were uh, saying, let's go ahead and cut that 10% this year, since there is going to be a budget cap. That's a good place to start. Where's the other one we got here? Okay, they would, yes sir? Oh, excuse me. Uh, revenue type, we did want to go, uh, I voted against that too, uh, to raise property taxes and also to raise commercial property tax rates. That I don't think you can split out, but uh, we want to go ahead and raise revenue. So that would help. Uh, we're going to raise $14 million and we've cut $13 million, so we're down. Uh, Oh, no, no, a lot less than that, because we're raising, we're raising $14 million on property taxes. Okay, uh, people at our table want to raise COLA, cost of living increase, price of gas has gone up, so, so, so the price of living has gone up, 4.5%. We don't have a figure, so we came up with that. Human services, there are a lot of poor people in San Antonio, and there's a lot of poor people in District 10. We'd like to see at least 2% across there. And also for the delegated agencies, those are usually, if I'm not mistaken, tell me if I'm wrong, aren't those like church and, and private organizations working to, to fill gaps that are needed here? District 10 has a lot of homebound seniors. Okay, wrap would, it up, Bill. We would like to see 2% increase in dedicated agencies. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Table 4. Now, Table 5. Okay, my name is Jean Brady, and um, Vanna White is here to uh, help me show the charts. You have to do your hand like that. Okay, uh, in number one, the budget gap, we propose uh, programs for reduction uh, that we would align uniform benefits with civilian employees to the tune of $2 million. Uh, center city development would be reduced $1 million. Streets, we didn't really put a figure on that, and what we wanted is for more care to be taken with streets so that, you know, you fix the street one week and then two months later you, you come back and you have to dig it up again. So, um, the next one is delegate agencies, two million. 
and we propose uh, under revenue to be increased uh, at least a one cent property tax increase. And the second one is after school program fees. One, and that might generate what we were hoping for would be uh, to raise the cap on it a little bit so uh, people could uh, raise that money a little more that way. Okay, under improvements, service areas, uh, align uniform benefits with civilian employees. So that means like each one would sort of balance out. And so as you raise one or brought one down, then that would work out that way is the way we saw it. Parks and uh, on, under parks to um, do improvements, we raise fees. But we would like to see those fees go back to the parks. So that would be that. And for the library, we would suggest no cuts at all. We certainly would like to stay open more hours, though, by the way. Thank you very much. Let's hear it for table five. OK, table six. Hello, everybody. I'm Jackie, and I'm representing Table 6. Um, we were at a very uh, big disadvantage. We did not have um, the fiscal year 2014 budget facts until the last maybe 60 seconds of our, our debate. So um, we did the best we could with the information we had. And um, OK, so I would like to talk about um, Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm going to need to do this. Um, we did talk about uh, cuts. Um, we, um, I thought was kind of ingenious if, if we're going to have to cut, to cut all departments by 0.3%. So everyone gets a small amount. It wasn't my idea, but I really liked it. Um, and revenue. I think revenue is important. Um, we debated commercial property tax, but we didn't come to a conclusion. Um, on that, so um, we don't really have that to talk about. Um, but we also um, talked about uh, fees for the park, um, and of course, I like the idea of it going back into the park, and there's someone else at my table that likes that as well. Um, okay, uh, we, we wanted to add in some improvements. Was there anything else? No? Okay. Um, we wanted to add improvements um, with animal care services, specifically with education. Um, that's very important um, to us. And um, the proposed number was uh, 25K. Um, and we figured we could get that from um, SAPD and SAFD, which I really, you know, hate saying that. But if, you know, we have to take money from somewhere, um, that they do get a lot in, in with their benefits. Um, so um, one other thing mentioned was infrastructure that didn't make the board. Um, infrastructure also um, needs some attention. Um, and was, was there anything else? No. I, I feel really bad because we really did not have this, and, and it would have helped our discussion quite a bit, and we would have had more points on our boards. So for, for now, that's what we have. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Table six. OK, table seven. Who's our spokesman for table seven? Okay, Jim. Don't forget the Spurs start at eight. <laughs> We're getting there. Hello? Oh. So the very agreeable uh, table number seven, I wouldn't suggest total consensus, but we were pretty close. So we raised uh, $25 million, and we did that by aligning uniform benefits with civilian employees. Uh, ooh, we had a suggestion that we needed to cut a million dollars from the city attorney's office, and since nobody was going to defend attorneys, there you go. Um, <laughs> we went $2 million from non-departmental and uh, $1 million from one-time projects. And then uh, we want to tax ourselves an additional uh, $8 million on property tax and raise the residential alarm renewal fees for $3 million. So that's a total of $25 million. Uh, we want to enhance animal care to the tune of $1 million, pay for it with the EMS transport fee increase, uh, enhance human services, especially senior citizen services, uh, $1 million, and pay for that out of historic preservation. 
and increase uh, streets by $3 million and pay for that out of delegate agencies, and the District 10 and District 9 council members can figure out where that money comes from. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Table 7. Table 8. Okay, Roger, you're on. Okay. Well, since this is an exercise, I'm, I'll try to explain this easily as I can. We've determined that you're right. The lawyers are not going to be here arguing with us. So, yes, we were going to cut a million dollars from the, from the attorney staff. Uh, we're going to cut, we're asking to cut two million from the municipal courts. Um, we're going to cut uh, from the city, center city development, two million, human services, one million. Health Department, one million, and delegate the, uh, agencies, one million, after school programs, one million, and downtown operation, one million, and increase revenues by in charging park fees. I don't know if any of you have ever gone and cleaned some of the parks after some of the big events of the year end, but they do make a mess sometimes, and I think that we need to charge those people that, that, that set off an area of the park for the holiday season so no one else can use it. Those, there needs to be a fee for utilizing that space and denying other people access. <laughs> the library, uh, we, we need to create some way of offsetting some of the additional cost in the library because I understand that they're going to no books and we're going to be util utilizing a lot of uh, pads. And I'm sure some of these pads are going to be lost. And these pad there needs to be some way of re regaining some of that revenue in the library, so there should be a fee for this type of lost books, and we need to collect this for the future. Uh, there needs to be an increased cost or fee for EMS transport. There are a lot of people abusing this, and when they could easily uh, drive themselves or have someone drive them to the EMS. Now, I know there's going to be some people disagree with this, but there is a lot of need for generating revenue somewhere. Uh, the planning department. Everybody is, is, may not agree with this, but there's a lot of new developments and a lot of the infrastructure that the city is providing to get these services to that area that needs to be offset with some additional fees for the developers that are going further out in the community and making us put a bigger burden on the infrastructure for the inner city. Uh, court enforcement. We need to create an enforcement department that has some teeth. When they write a citation, we need to collect some fees because they have to follow that up, and who around us doesn't have someone who has a home in the neighborhood that's either abandoned or, or uh, not taken care of very well. Okay, Roger, need to wrap it up. Okay, and then animal care, we need, I think that we can, uh, what needs to be done is if, when they take these animals in, we should chip these animals and charge the people that come pick up their animals $500 for chipping them, so that we don't get them lost anymore, we know who they belong to. Police, we want more revenue for the police. We want more police. And we want to get that money from the economic department and uh, residential alarm fees. We need more policemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Table eight. Okay, table nine. I'm, I'm Al Fulton with uh, table nine here. And we're focusing mainly on dealing with the revenue shortfall. Uh, people have talked about uh, aligning the benefits with civilian employees, and we were told that it was about eight million to do that, and we're suggesting an in-between number of about four million to be achieved by uh, negotiating there. Uh, reductions in the executive and the administrative uh, non-uniform and reduction in the non-departmental costs of three to four million. We'd like to enhance revenue with property tax. If one cent gets us seven million dollars, that's 25% of the problem solved right there. So at least a one cent increase. We were told that the uh, total budget for fees is about 60 million that we take in. A 20% increase across the board of fees yields uh, $12 million there, so there's $19 million uh, increased revenue without, without much pain, I don't think, and, uh, and with some negotiating over here. Uh, obviously, we would have more to play with if we went up two cents on that, the $14 million increase on the property tax, but uh, my, my first 
our first interest was in solving the revenue shortfall rather than getting uh, extra. In terms of improving services, uh, streets, infrastructure is a big thing. A city has to be safe and it has to have infrastructure. So uh, we're all in favor of the, uh, the streets. The library functions are very important uh, across the city and would like to Im improve those, increase that. And streets and traffic operations and the health department were areas in which we would increase the budgets without having put specific numbers on it. But uh, that's why people get paid the big bucks to put specific numbers on it. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Al. Way to go, table nine. And we, and we work cheap. <laughs> okay, table 10. Two more to go. Table 10. Good evening. Um, our group agreed to disagree, and we didn't agree on anything. We just had a lot of good opinions and a lot of dialogue. We did agree for the most part that we wanted to have the police in line with everybody else. We also decided that we didn't want any bonuses for anybody in the, in the higher uh, spots. We agreed that uh, we should check out and see if the city has any properties that are empty and we're having to pay the rent and we're having to pay utilities that, you know, those either we need to lease out or rent out or try and get out of that contract with the legal department. Um, and we wanted to add a couple of fees for like animal care. If you keep losing your animal, if you don't spade your animal. And uh, again, we had a very diverse group. We wanted to uh, make our city more green. So we thought investing in solar as gradually, because in the long run, that would benefit the city. This, is, this has nothing to do with the city budget, but our group just wanted everybody to know, we don't want streetcars. Uh, we couldn't agree on coda, uh, colas. We uh, talked about it, and uh, we do want city and uh, street improvements. I think the whole city has areas, whether it's uh, holes in the streets or sidewalks that are cracked or whatever. Um, this one, we were so far apart on this delegate agencies that we had to put it in the middle. We didn't put it in the, on the right or the left, it's in the center. Uh, so it just depends on how you felt about it. And the libraries, the county is spending $1.3 million on one uh, library that it's just e-books. Our libraries all have physical books and I heard him say we, weren't gonna, we were only going to do e-books and no, we still carry books and we have space for people to meet. So everybody felt like that's a good investment in our uh, education. Anything for education uh, is good for the city. Okay, we need to be wrapping it up. I'm finished. Very good, let's give them a hand. Go Spurs. Okay, the one we've all been waiting for, table 11. Okay, good evening, I'm Ray Knox, District 9. And, uh, one thing about the budget uh, that need to know that all the agencies, all the departments, I think are already required to look at a 10% cut across the board. So in, in looking at that, it's really hard to try to find something on top of that after the last several years, there's been 10% cut each year. Uh, so we didn't focus as much on what to get rid of because it's kind of hard to trim lean off of fat. Uh, but we did come up with some things. Uh, one of them, uh, uh, of course, has been mentioned many times tonight is the economic development. I think there's, uh, you know, that, uh, and all of these I have to say, we didn't put dollar amounts because we just kind of be pulling that out of somewhere and not where it would really be coming up. And uh, so we kind of left that part alone uh, to the people to know more about those. Uh, but the economic development, uh, you know, there's uh, development incentives for downtown, east side, west side, south side, 
we didn't see the north side, but it's one of those things that need to be revisited. See if those amounts have been really benefiting over the last several years. Make sure that it is efficient and that it is helping bring uh, businesses in and, and is productive. Uh, so that's one area to look at. Also, uh, we do hope that the, uh, when the benefits with the uh, uniform is brought up, that uh, good negotiations will help make that more equitable across the board as well. Uh, and now, of course, that was one that uh, uh, definitely could bring in a, a, a cut from the budget. But also, uh, uh, it, in part of the uh, uh, uniformed, uh, I know when some of the dependents is not part of this uh, collective bargaining agreement, but uh, for dependents, it isn't required to uh, uh, properly list who all is a dependent to make sure it's efficient and who's being covered or not. So that needs to be looked at. Uh, also, in human services, that's one thing that we can see that there needs to be additions, could be some subtractions. We'd like for the whole thing to be revisited, make sure it's efficient for uh, the quality that you're getting back for your, your money. Uh, one name that popped up is, it, that I've seen every year that pops up in amongst our discussion was the Project Quest. You know, is that something that's being, uh, you know, efficiently used and, and productive for the total amount that it's, it's, it's at? Uh, now, bringing in revenue, we've also talked about the property tax in our group. Uh, we had a vote. It was actually voted to, to keep it the same, uh, but we did have quite a bit of discussion on that. One thing, reason why they wanted to keep it the same, they're worried about if you add tax here, uh, it might open the door for many other uh, taxes, fees, and other things, uh, though some of us might have thought different, but that was the democratic process in ours. Uh, now, also, uh, permit fees. Uh, there are some that permit fees for uh, all different, it, all the departments that have permits across the board need to be revisited. Some of them have gone up the last few years. Have to make sure it's not a burden on uh, what is being done and that continue to have the amount of permits we have. But that's something to be revisited. One thing I'll mention about uh, uh, permit fees, uh, so for instance, like the parks, the there may be fees that can go up, but it's known that these permit fees go to the general fund. They're not dedicated to any d particular agency. So keep that in mind as well when you're okay, we looking need to wrap at that. Up. Go ahead. Okay, also code enforcement. That's been talked about. We agree with that. Uh, also, uh, it wouldn't hurt to increase maybe fire alarm fees just a little bit. And I think we've been through this. Let me see this last one here. Oh, on a... The additional size improvements. Human service is there too. Uh, adult education been cut quite a bit here recently, and I think that uh, we think that is very much important. Uh, in some places, more important than pre-K, uh, which isn't part of this, of course. But funding in adult services is. But also, uh, uh, the parks and the libraries need to not only be kept up, but not cut, but kept up. And one thing, uh, uh, maintenance on parks is extremely important. We've increased the amount of land in parks and uh, having a hard time keeping that infrastructure up. So that's it for all of okay. us Okay, let's give a hand to table 11. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I wanna thank you for this time. I think this has been absolutely great. These are the kind of things we need to hear. City staff, thank you for showing up tonight. We really do appreciate it. We're glad that we've got a voice in this process. They've taken very good notes on what you've had to say. And I assure you that uh, this is the sort of thing we'll be fighting about when we finally come up with this final budget. Again, thank you very much. Councilman Cryer, thank you for coming out from District 9. And to those of you from whatever district, go Spurs, go.